Boom. Man, try not to get scared. We got a scary story. Bone chilling. Spooky. Let's get right into it, man. October 1st, we're kicking it off all Halloween stuff. All month. You know how we going. If it's not Halloween, I might post other miscellaneous, but we're going we gonna to do scary things. So let's get right into it. Yo. All right, let's run it back. This happened let's back in 2015. Yeah. Let's get the obligatory backstory out of the way. Mm -hmm. I'm the eldest of three brothers. Mm -hmm. At the time, my brother Eli was seven and Danny was 12, and I had just turned 17 a week prior. Yeah. My parents have always been a couple of party animals. Whenever the holidays would come around, they would always go out and have a few drinks with friends leaving us home with a babysitter until I was about 14. Mm. Then it became my responsibility to watch after my younger brothers. There was this girl who was my age named Shelly who lived across the street from us. She had a brother named Charlie who was the same age as Eli, and they were very good friends. Yep. I used to have a crush on Shelly, but I never said anything to her because of the usual teenage awkwardness that we all oh. go through. Oh, me too. By the time I grew out of that stage, Shelly had already been through a few boyfriends. Now, I don't mean to sound mean or anything, but Shelly had horrible taste in men. She would always go for these wannabe gangster types. The type of loser who you'd see arguing with the desk clerk at the DMV. It was like these dips came off an assembly line or something. I swear, she'd drop one loser only to get with another guy who was exactly like the one she just dumped. Anyways, by the time I turned 17, I had gone through a pretty drastic physical transformation. Okay. I was much taller and stronger than most kids my age. My father is a very big man, 6 foot 4, 240 pounds, and it seemed that I was shaping up to become just like him. When I started becoming bigger, Shelly started coming around more and more, flirting oh, with me and yep. whatnot. Yep. I was always nice to her for the most part but I honestly had no interest in being in a relationship with her at that point. Yo, I mean, her. after seeing the kind of trouble she brought around. Mm -hmm. She was one of those girls who thought bragging about how she hung out with gang members and smoked weed was just so full. I found it to be repulsive and annoying. So the yeah. day before Halloween, I was working on fixing my dad's lawnmower. It had been giving us some trouble lately, and I was checking out the motor to see what the issue was. I was working in the garage and had the garage door open. It was simply just way too hot to be inside the garage with the door closed. I can't remember the exact reason, but I was in a bad mood that day. So when I looked over my shoulder to see Shelly standing there in a really skimpy outfit, I just instantly became aggravated. Hey, Mike. She had said in an irritating, seductive voice. I let out a groan under my breath before I responded. What's up, Shelly? Can I help you with something? Oh, I was just wondering if you wanted to go somewhere and have a little fun. Um, no thanks. I think I'm good. Shelly, a freak. <laughs> Stop playing. I've seen the way you look at me. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, if you don't mind, I'm busy. At this point, I was beginning to lose my patience. Don't be that way. You know you want this. The only thing I want is for you to get the hell out of my garage. Isn't okay. there some other head you can bother? Okay. I couldn't believe I said those words as they left my mouth. I'm usually much nicer to her, but this was the first time she had ever come on to me. I knew it was going to happen soon. They hit us with a good ad. Rocket League. Go support Rocket League. Sooner or later, but I didn't really plan on being so aggressive when I turned her down. Are you kidding me? You're turning me down? Um, yeah. Can you please leave now? You idiot. You're gonna regret this. I just shook my head as I watched her stomp off. I didn't take her threat seriously. I just chalked it up to her not being able to handle rejection well, and then went about my day. Right, right, right. That's the next was. night was, of course, Halloween. My parents were invited to an adults-only party. They told me that I was to take my brother's trick-or-treating and to not wait up for them, as they wouldn't be back until the next day. 
So I did what I was told, and I watched over Danny and Eli as they walked from house to house collecting candy. After about an hour, Joker we saw a little outfit. boy in a ninja costume standing in the street. That's the boy was crying his eyes out and asking where his sister was. To my shock, the boy was Charlie, Shelly's younger brother. I asked him what happened. Charlie said that he was trick-or-treating with his sister and that when he got back from getting candy from the house across the street, which had a really long driveway, his sister was nowhere in sight. I was pretty much instantly worried. I thought something might have happened to her, so I immediately called Charlie's mother, Shauna. It might be a Shauna was enraged upon hearing that Charlie was all by himself. She went on to say that her and Shelly got into this huge fight earlier that day because Shelly wanted to spend the evening with another boyfriend instead of taking her brother trick-or-treating. She suspected that Shelly ditched her brother then ran off with her boyfriend. I didn't want to get involved with this family drama, but I offered to watch after Charlie and take him trick-or-treating with my brothers around the neighborhood. Charlie and Eli were buddies after all. Shauna thanked me and she said that she would deal with Shelly as soon as she found out where she was. Oh, man. I Shelly thought it was no pretty good. shitty for Shelly to ditch her brother and run off with some guy, but it wasn't my problem. I was just going to make sure that Charlie had a good time and then got back home safely. Mm -hmm. However, I was not prepared for what happened later that night. The rest of that evening was pretty uneventful. Being around Danny and Eli seemed to really cheer up Charlie. Charlie was a good kid. I'm glad I was able to save his Halloween experience and distance him from the chaos that was undoubtedly waiting for him back home, at least for a time. I would say around 9 o'clock was when we dropped Charlie back off at his house. Shauna answered the door and thanked me for looking after him. I could tell she was very upset about the situation. Me and my brothers came back home and after watching a horror movie and going through the candy, I then made them wash up and get ready for bed. After the boys fell asleep, I settled down in my room and began going through my phone. Just as I was starting to nod off, I was then startled by a really loud smack at my bedroom window. I could hear a muffled voice coming from the other side. I couldn't make out what was being said, but I clearly heard a male voice saying the word mother multiple times. Don't ask me how, but I just somehow knew what was going on. Now, you may be thinking that someone may have been trying to break in, or maybe some psychopath was lurking around the backyard with a knife, but I promise you what was actually going on is much dumber than you could possibly imagine. I recognized the voice that was outside my bedroom window. It belonged to a guy named Derek. He used to go to my school, but he was expelled for dealing drugs in the bathroom. A real winner. He, of course, had an on and off relationship with Shelly. As I said, I knew why he was outside my house knocking on my window. I believe that Shelly had reached out to him after I turned her down and concocted some bullshit story about me being rude to her or something, and this dork had the audacity to come and provoke me at my home. I have a zero tolerance policy for anyone who comes to my home looking for trouble. What I calmly got up and walked to my back porch and saw Derek looking right into my bedroom window, which was next to the porch. Shelly was standing behind him with her arms crossed. I opened the door and stepped out into the back porch. As soon as I did, I was assaulted by a freight train of insults from the two delinquents. Derek had a pocket knife in his hand and was walking up the porch steps towards me. As soon as I saw the knife, I immediately sprung into action. I rushed right for him and shoved him backwards off the steps. He then hit the ground hard. Oh my Before God. he even had a chance to get up, I was towering over him and hitting him in the face with a closed fist. Oh my After God. about the second or third blow, I could see that he was out cold. Blood was gushing from his nose and mouth and he was twitching really badly. What? I knew if I continued pounding on him, he'd be drinking through a straw for the rest of his life and I really didn't want that on my conscience. I got off of Derek uh, and looked over to Shelly, who was standing there with a look of absolute shock all over her face. I was so disgusted with her, and I gave her some parting words. Did you seriously ditch your brother tonight so you could get with this idiot and come after me? You're so pathetic. Get the hell off my property. I'm calling the police. 
It wasn't until I turned around and started walking back up the porch steps that Shelly started shouting at me. I'm no gang members. They're going to come back here and kick your ass. When I turned back around, there were two police officers that appeared behind Shelly with their guns drawn. Shelly was still shouting at me, completely unaware that the cops were literally right behind her. All I could do was smile and fold my arms and watch as Shelly's face turn completely pale when one of the officers then told her, Shut up and put your hands in the air. After everything was said and done, Derek was taken to the hospital with a concussion, a broken nose, and several missing teeth. He would face trespassing charges as soon as he recovered. Shelly was kicked out of her house for the stunt she pulled that night, and I haven't seen her since. I do sincerely hope that she learned a lesson that night and that she's turned her life around for the better. There's a couple of more things I'd like to say. There's something I want to say real quick. He mangled Derek. He handled Derek. Don't ever come at nobody. Try to initiate somebody that has a knife out. That's a bad idea. But he, he mangled Derek. Say before the story ends. He mangled the Derek. The first is that if you have younger brothers or sisters, you should make sure they enjoy their Halloween, even if that means you have to cancel your own plans. Absolutely. Halloween is a very special night for children, and there's only a handful of years they have to really enjoy it. That's the facts. second is that if you show up at someone's house with a knife threatening them, you better have a good dental insurance plan. And that's that. Me and my buddies used to. He said. And that's that. Cave Derek stuff in. That's that. It's being a boy OG. We with the animated story, man.